Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. Looks like it's mini May, hijack four, renegade, 24, number eight, coach fade away. All this is 11 grade, still in school, let them hate. So the Brooklyn Nets these past what four, almost five years have made a complete 720 in terms of direction and literally built what they got going on now from scrap and threw in potential pieces in the trash bag of an organization that they were at the time. An attempt though to recycle certain pieces and turn something of little value, nothing into something greater. Now the Nets experimented with so many pieces over the years and gave a lot of low player tiers another chance in this life. Players like Archie Goodwin, KJ McDaniels, Jeremy Lin, and Anthony Bennett were all a part of that pitiful but yet key 2016 roster. Out of every single player on that roster, only three players survived, and today we're going to be focusing on one of them. Aside from that, them boys did a clean sweep. They got rid of everyone but this one player. This player was viewed as a piece with some type of value, and considering where they were at at the time, this piece was considered a sign of life. This organization was basically a desert. Everything was dead. But this one random plant stood out and just continued to grow and grow and grow as the days go by. That plant that I'm referring to, if you didn't know already, is Karis LeVert for the Sloans. It's pretty obvious. Now, many may not believe so, but to me, in my humble, honest opinion, Karis was one of the most underrated, probably in my book, the most underrated player last year. He was a four-year player in college, which is really weird to hear about nowadays. And he was the 20th pick back in the 2016 class. Now, awkwardly enough, Karis' first two years played a key bench role, but he did it well, really well. He played it under no type of pressure and unbearable expectations. Thanks to his play style and the type of sets and pace that their head coach, Kenny Atkinson, likes to play at, his value on the court would skyrocket. This 6'7", do-it-all type of guard is exactly what you want on your roster. He may not be the most explosive athlete, the fastest athlete, or the most athletic either, but he kills on the court with his quickness and craftiness. It feels like he's a silent threat who's always in stealth mode on the court, just waiting for the right moment to snap and attack. The way he goes about his business on the court makes him one of the most skilled offensive players in the league. Now, does he have the stats of a star to show for it? No, hell no, and to be honest, he probably never will have the stats to show for it as long as he's playing alongside Kyrie and KD. I'm just being honest. But that is completely fine because that is not who he is, at least not in this moment of time. Karis Levert is not a star piece. He is a complimentary star piece. A piece that'll fit nearly every single situation around the league. Especially in this one, even with the two new massive signings. Karis is one of the more versatile wings in the league offensively. Not only because of his ability to be a threat to defenses when he blows past by his defender to eke into the lane, but also because of his playmaking ability. Now once again, the numbers, the stats won't point to him being a viable, consistent, reliable player. Playmate. Most of the time that was D'Lo's job last year or Spencer Dinwiddie. But when guys like D'Lo especially, for instance, struggled in the playoffs, he can take it upon himself and carry the offense for stretches. There were times last year in the playoffs where it seemed like the Nets were dead in the water, but he would be the random wave that would make a huge impact and change the energy, the pace, the flow, the direction of the game. But I expect a very few amount of you guys being able to recall Karis Lover killing it in the beginning of the season last year, it was a very long time ago. He averaged 18 at a certain time and was hitting clutch buckets for the Nets. He was the best player and the most improved player last year until this moment here. Okogie coast to coast and a whistle comes in. And they're gonna get a, well, they're looking for help. Did they signal block or charge as Russell gets up? And still down on the floor. For the New Jersey Nets. Good. Yep, it does not. If it wasn't for this injury right here, I feel like he would be looked at in a different light in the NBA world because of the more attractive numbers he would have put up. But thanks to that injury, as we all know, his road to stardom was officially put on pause. And it was put on pause for good, maybe, because of all the talent acquired this offseason. Last year, though, he was able to bounce back and eventually turn into an even better player. Once he was 110% and got into his rhythm again, Karras was at full strength and showed his true colors in the playoffs, where he averaged 21 a game on 4 
29% from the field and 46 from three. I remind you, against some of the most intimidating set of defenders in the league in Simmons, Butler, and Embiid. He was just way too much of a pain for defenders. He will literally have them on their toes almost at all times. And now that he has one of the best tap dancers in the league in Kyrie and one of the best in KD the year after that, this guard-oriented team will be in some serious contention for a title soon. Interesting enough, while this video was in the works, Karis LeVert signed a $17.5 million deal for three years. And when that news right there came out, I just know for a fact my mojo senses are flowing and they're kicking in right now that that moment right there, that news, ruined a lot of teams' plans offseason for next year. He was going to be one of the top targeted free agents because of his youth and star potential. In a year from now, many will view his contract as one of the most valuable deals because he's honestly worth more than 17 mil a year. His potential doesn't quite equate to the checks that he's going to be cashing in soon, but he had to accept it, of course, because of the no-risk factor. We've seen it happen to plenty of guys before, but as of recent, the biggest names were Isaiah Thomas and Demarcus Cousins lost out on millions of dollars. And if I was Karis LeVert, I'd honestly probably do the same thing because you never know when a catastrophic injury could just fall out from the sky and just bust your head wide open on the court. Just take the money, man. Be safe. So it was a safe, solid move for both sides. Now in Brooklyn, he can and probably will be the undisputed second option for now behind Kyrie, an eventual third option on the team in two years. I believe that Karis LeVert is the ideal third option to have on a championship level team in the NBA today. He's not good enough to actually lead a championship team or even be like the second best player on a championship team, if we're being quite honest here. But he definitely is good enough to be one of the best players on one. What I also love about his fit Throughout all the shuffling that's been done, it's how he seems like a natural fit on the court. Being the third option is just right for Karis. The placement literally couldn't be any better. You're not really asking him to do too much, and you're also not lowballing him at all. Ben's been asked to come off of the bench multiple times throughout his career, so to have this opportunity present him is amazing. He's played his role in rebuilding this thing from dirt with Brooklyn, and he's going to continue to play a big role in Brooklyn's success as well. This upcoming season, I expect him to average nothing below 16 a game, and at best, he can average 20 a game with much better consistency and efficiency, as long as he stays healthy, of course. Two years from now, Brooklyn could very well be viewed as the best big three in the league because of Karras' progress and his ability to play his role to the fullest. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, if you watching this, I present to you the forgotten star, Karis LeVert. Oh, and uh, this is kind of bad timing, but before I forget, check out the Evolve site where you can get yourself some dope streetwear, ran by yours truly, of course. Go ahead, get fresh, support your swag, and also support me. And also, check out the latest episode out on the podcast channel that I host with Rocky. <laughs> I said Rucky, whoa. I'm not even gonna cut that out with the Rusty Buckets. I'm not gonna cut it out because I'm too lazy to edit. Do those two things and also follow me on Instagram because I'm gonna be doing a giveaway over there soon. And whoop, I was not supposed to say that, damn. Once again, I'm too lazy to edit. But uh, yeah, man, I really, really do appreciate you for taking time out of your day to come over here and see what I have to talk about today. Make sure you go ahead and leave a like comment share this video and also subscribe if you haven't already i don't know what's wrong with you this is the end of the video i really really do appreciate you for watching and um yeah make the day great and i'll get right with you no way no way when i couldn't get a play no hope i have a place stay i got the work made it sir free the way so my girl who'd have a on a mission okay i'm not i don't understand why you chose to do this mission i'm this is just saying this is just a hypothetical okay so you're on a mission to rob a bank <laughs> and you have three players three nba players to take with you who are they going to be now okay before you give your answer let me just gilbert arenas on game okay and let me let me let me give you my strategy no no throwback players players who are playing today by the way because throwback players are too easy so here are my three players right now I have the aggressor. The aggressor is Patrick Beverly. He has Blair, He has a black Air Forces, and he is up to no good at all times. You, you always need Air that Forces. one aggressive dog. You always need that one aggressive dog, and that's Patrick Beverly. My second player is Draymond Green. He is the voice. He is the man with the plan. He's a, he's a knife, okay? He's a Swiss Army knife. And the third guy that I'm taking with me 
is the calm voice, the calm, cool, collective guy. It's Lonzo Ball. Can't get no better than that. I'm robbing every bank and I'm can I'm pulling in racks like that. I'm getting away scot free too. <laughs> Thank you.